I think we should talk about the nest. Yes, definitely. Let's talk about the nest. Okay, so the evolved nest has uh, at least, well, a bunch of components that we've uh, identified, that anthropologists have identified, that are common all over the world in small than hunter-gatherer communities that uh, arose independently. So these are characteristics, again, that match up with the social mammal heritage that we have, and they are common in all these societies. And then uh, I'll go through them. But what's also notable is that the adults in this, these societies tend to be calm and generous and mm-hmm. uh, uh, open-minded, and it, it's a different human nature that they display. And I attribute that to this early nest. I call it a, a commons, a cultural commons <clears throat> for human nature. So these uh, characteristics include soothing birth experiences. So that means no pain inducement, no giving uh, painful procedures to that child. Mm -hmm. Uh, and no separation of mom and baby. And we've got neuroscience uh, evidence for all these nest components now showing how important they are and how when you violate them, you're actually undermining brain development in some fashion. So uh, separating the mom or not um, uh, actually reduces bonding uh, because mom and baby right after birth are all geared up, at least in natural birth conditions, they're all geared up to mind meld with each other, to bond. Their reward systems and their brains are just ready mm-hmm. for that glomming on to each other. So if you separate the mom and baby, you're undermining that, and you're undermining breastfeeding success. Breastfeeding is another one that's uh, in our ancestral context, is frequent, it's on request, the baby uh, is in charge because the mom is carrying the baby skin to skin. Uh, and uh, this is always a shocker for modern parents to hear that the average age of weaning, of stopping breastfeeding, is age four. Mm. And you go, oh, my God, you're <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah, people well, are blown away by that? that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why would that be? Well, it turns out that our immune system is not finished till about age five. And the breast milk has all the immunoglobulins that you need to build that immune system, among other thousands of ingredients. We hardly understand breast milk, but it seems to be this magic elixir uh, for all sorts of good things. Builds intelligence, keeps you from, it gives you good health, the more you have. And usually most studies are only looking at whether you had three months of breastfeeding versus formula rather than four years. So just think how much smarter we'd be if we'd have four years of breastfeeding, all of us. Yeah. Another one is affection, uh, caring, pretty much constant physical uh, touch in those first years. Uh, And throughout uh, life, really, much more affection and closeness, physical closeness, sleeping with uh, others and so on. Uh, We know from studies of rats, uh, that have been done for a couple decades, that if you have a high-nurturing rat mother, turns on genes that control anxiety. If you don't have that high-nurturing mother, those genes never get turned on, and that's within the first 10 days of life, which is the equivalent of six months for people. And so if you don't have the high nurturance that you need in the, that uh, critical period, those things never happen unless you take drugs. So I, we, I think people have uh, pointed to how the drug addictions that and drug drug use epidemics in the states are linked to early experience of the lack of support that's needed, including affection. Another one is uh, alloparents. Lots of, not lots, but several adult uh, caregivers other than mother uh, that are there to care for the baby because the baby's very needy with, you know, needing all this affection. and, And part of what's needed is responsiveness. So responsiveness to the cues of the baby, that means you, when the baby starts wiggling or making a face, you move in and try to make the baby comfortable. Because again, that baby is growing its brain and how its systems are going to work, the parameters, the thresholds for the stress response, uh, whether the oxytocin system gets, uh, grows well, all those things are related to how responsive the caregiver is. And so if you let the baby get too distressed, those things get off kilter. So you want to keep the baby calm in that uh, those 18 months, especially after birth. Uh, another one is play, free play, self-directed play in the natural world, multiple age playmates as you grow up. These are things that grow uh, very social, uh, various social skills, uh, controls of aggression, uh, leadership skills, all sorts of executive functions. And uh, kids should be playing throughout childhood. 
not sitting in chairs in school, you know. So that's another mm -hmm. way we violate human development is what we do to kids. And now the uh, cognitive learning of uh, is being pro pushed down into preschools instead of the playing that should be happening. It's just a really bad idea. So if you over if you push kids to grow their intele intellect, that you know deliberative mind that that you you say you have, you know, thinking about the big picture all the time. That's, you know, that abstract thinking. Right. If you push kids to do that too soon, then you're undermining their uh, holistic uh, intelligence, which is more of a right hemisphere brain development thing, which develops in early life and th throughout childhood. Uh, and then they're going to be left with emptiness because the left hemisphere, that deliberative mind, that uh, conscious mind, uses all the experience that the right hemisphere mind collects through childhood uh, to make decisions. If you have, if you're just sitting in school or watching screens, you don't have much to go on. And so you're going to be susceptible to be to ideologies and people telling you what to do because you don't have any sense of what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So you get you know, all these conformists from it. Let's see. Um, and another component is social support. Lots of social support. The child feeling like they're part of the community and that they have a positive effect on others. They can make them laugh or smile. And so you feel this close bonding beyond the mom as well. Right. So those are at least some of the, the components of the nest. Those are the ones we study in my lab and we find that they are related to in early childhood, three to five year olds, how much empathy they display their conscience development, their self-regulation or self-control. And then we can look at, we've looked at adults and we ask them about their childhoods. We ask them just six questions uh, we find uh, are predictive. And the six are about playing, uh, free play outside the home, inside the home, um, family togetherness, inside the home, outside the home, affection, and then the lack of corporal punishment. And all those six items predict whether that are, are uh, correlated with uh, whether the, the adult feel, has secure attachment. That's another thing we talk about. What their mental health is like uh, in terms of anxiety, depression, whether they can take the perspectives of others or get distressed instead or have little perspective taking, and whether they have then a more open-hearted um, morality instead of a closed, uh, hierarchical, self-protectionist morality. So we, we've published on these things.